Hello Code Gurus, welcome back. And as a part of this video tutorial, we will see how to set up development environment for building mobile applications using Quasar Framework. All right then, first let's proceed to the browser and go to the Quasar website. So on the top left, you have docs section. So just click on that so that you will be navigated to the documentation section. So now over here, you have a section called as Quasar CLI. And under that CLI section, you have uh, instructions for creating various applications. So now as a part of this video tutorial, we will be concentrating on mobile apps. So just click on mobile apps. So now you have Quasar offers two different solutions for creating mobile apps. The first solution is using your Cordova. And the second solution is pretty new, which is through Capacitor which is created by a Ionic framework. So as a part of this video tutorial, we will be limiting ourselves using Cordova. All right then, so let's proceed to the Cordova section. So here you have this developing uh, Cordova apps. So you have a quick introduction, you can have a quick read through that. So now let's straight, straight away jump to a section called as Cordova preparation. So the first and foremost you need to do is you should ensure that your Cordova is installed on your machine. So now let's proceed to our terminal and to complete that step. So here, just go to your terminal, just say npm install hyphen g Cordova. So what this will do is just, it will just go ahead and connect to the npm repository and download the related packages uh, related to your Cordova and installs on your machine. So just give it a couple of seconds. All right, so we have successfully installed Cordova on our machine. Now let's go back to the browser again. So what is the next step? So the next step is for creating your Android applications, you need to have a Android Studio set up on your machine. So here, if you see over here, they have given a direct link, which takes you to the Android Studio website where you have instructions for uh, downloading that studio and installing that studio. So I have already downloaded this uh, studio on my machine just to save some time. And if you are not sure about the instruction steps, just click over here instruction steps and you can go through the installation steps. So they have given various installation steps for your Windows and as well as for your Mac. So just follow the steps and you would be successfully installing your Android Studio. And once you have installed your Android Studio, the next important step which you need to do is you need to go ahead and set up your environment variables which exposes your android home so before that step actually what you need to do is you just need to go ahead and accept your sdk manager licenses so how do you go ahead and uh, uh, accept this sdk manager licenses is uh, it's pretty simple so if you are using a mac os and the latest version of your operating system your Android Studio by default will be installed under library section. Otherwise, the default section would be your home folder Android slash SDK. So depending upon your operating system version, the path might differ. So be careful with that. Now let's go to the terminal and complete this licenses agreement. So here go to your location, go to first ensure that you are under your home folder. So these instructions are related specifically for your Mac operating system. So you can follow the uh, Windows instructions on the website. So here you, you, should, you need to navigate under a folder called as library and under this you should see a folder called as Android. So you have Android folder over there and under that you should see something called as SDK. So now over here under this SDK there should be something called as tools folder. So get into the tools folder and under the tools folder, you should see something called as bin folder. So let me clear the screen and do a ls. So here you should see your SDK licenses manager. So here what I'll do is I'll just go back to the website and copy the command and paste it over here. So it just simply says SDK manager hyphen hyphen licenses. So here is your SDK manager. So just paste that and just say hyphen hyphen licenses. So here, since it's your Unix or Linux based, you need to execute that explicitly. 
and it will just simply go ahead and fetch all the instructions and uh, it will ask you to accept the licenses so just give it some time all right so we have successfully accepted the licenses let's proceed to the next step so what is the next step as i said you need to go ahead and expose this environment variables so what i have done is i've already configured that thing on my machine so let me go ahead and uh, straight away show show that thing to you so what i've done is since uh, on my mac operating system it has installed under the library section so by just simply copy pasting this uh, two lines under your bash profile will not help so what i've done is i've just copy pasted the exact same values but i have added the library uh, onto the path so here let's go let's go back to my bash profile so it's under my home directory so the reason why i've added in my bash profile is every time i just want to go ahead and start the terminal all the environment variables associated to your studio is available so here these are the exact two lines which we have seen in that website so all i have done is instead of saying dollar home android studio i've added my library section over here that's it so with this you have completed the first step of installing your sdks so what is the next step let's go ahead and load that sdk over here so here i'll just say android studio so the next important step if you go back to the website would be you need to go ahead and install go to your sdk manager and install appropriate version of emulators so here what i've done is i've just loaded my android studio so just give it a couple of minutes to load that so now over here once you are over here you should see something called as configure button over here just click on that go to your sdk manager now what this i've done is in order to just to save our time i have selected all this uh, android uh, sdks so that i can target different operating systems so i was i was intending to create an application which could support right from android 4 to android 10 so you can just select whichever the version of operating system you want to support and uh, just go ahead and just click on that and click on ok it will automatically be downloaded by your android studio and install it on your machine now as a point to be noted over here is as of now your cordova still uh, it just only supports still android 8.1 or android oreo so just ensure that you at least have android oreo installed on your machine so once that is done the next important step is you need to create an android virtual device so how do you create your android virtual device again just go back click on configure click on an avd manager so now over here it just starts a avd manager over here now what you need to do over here is just click on create new virtual device and select whatever the device which you want to do and just click on next and whatever the version you want to download just click on download so in my scenario i have already downloaded android oreo on your on my machine as i said earlier cordova as of now just supports still android uh, android 8.0 so just ensure that that is there and just click on next and you can give your avd whatever the device name you want and uh, that will go ahead and download all the related uh, emulator related uh, uh, dependencies and install it on your machine again so for again uh, on my machine i have already downloaded that thing and kept it ready so here in order to uh, just confirm that this step was successful just click on actions and you should go ahead and start booting a emulator android emulator on your machine so if you are not able to see this thing then you need to go ahead and uh, probably debug the steps whatever the mistake which you have done so if you are able to see the emulator and the google is automatically booting up that means you have successfully set up the android environment so i'll just leave that thing over there or you can close it because we don't need that for timing i'll just simply say i don't want to uh, save the state so with these three steps first you need to install your android studio sorry the first step is you need to install your cordova and the next next step was you need to go ahead and install your android studio the third step was 
going ahead and accepting your licenses. And the fourth step is configuring your environment variables. And the fifth step was to download all the SDK APIs on your machine under your SDK manager. And the last step was to go ahead and create an Android virtual device. By completing all those steps, you have successfully created your Android environment. So now let's go back to our project and see whether we can really, really create an Android application or not. So now for that, let's go back to our project folder. Code Guru is our project folder. So now how do I go ahead and add Android application related capabilities to my application? So it is pretty simple. It's just one command. All you have to say is Quasar dev mode is going to be your Cordova and the target is going to be your Android. So now once you click on this Android, so it will automatically identify whether you have already installed on Android on your project or not. If it is not there, then it will go ahead and try to install it on your machine, uh, install it on your project. So just give it a couple of minutes. It will go ahead and download all the dependencies which it needed. And it will also go ahead and uh, boot an emulator for you. So if you have completed your previous step successfully, then only you'll be able to see your emulator over here. Otherwise, you won't be able to see your emulator. So just give it a couple of minutes, depending upon your uh, system speed. It might take a couple of seconds to minutes. All right, so it has successfully booted my emulator and as well as installed my application and launched that application inside my Android emulator. So with this step, we have successfully created, uh, with this step, we have successfully established the development environment for creating Android applications. Now the next question would be, how about iOS applications? Can I create with Quasar? Yes, absolutely. You could go ahead and create even your iOS applications using your Quasar framework. Now let's go back to the website and see how do I create the iOS applications. So here you have seen a section called as iOS setup. So this is a section of instructions which you need to follow in order to create an iOS application using your Quasar framework. Now the first requirement would be you need a macOS based system and on that you need to go ahead and install this Xcode. That's it. It's much simpler. You need not accept any license or anything. It's automatically done when you have when you are installing Xcode on your macOS. So now I'm currently since I'm running a macOS operating system, I have already installed Xcode on my machine. So it's it's pretty it's, it was pretty straightforward. All you have to do is go to the Mac store and just say Xcode. It will automatically download from there. So here just go ahead and say Xcode and it will just go ahead and so instead of if it is not installed you will be seeing a, a get button over here since it's already installed on my machine it just simply says open so you need not open and do any uh, emulator setup you need not do anything it's pretty straightforward in case of iOS so all you have to do is just go to the command prompt and then simply say quasar dev space m Again, Cordova, the target is iOS. That's it. So in case of iOS, it was pretty straightforward. So in case of Android, you need to go ahead and follow a couple of uh, steps in order to set up the development environment. But the only condition for creating your Android, uh, sorry, iOS applications is you need to have a Mac OS based system. You cannot do it on your Windows system. So, all right, so just give it a couple of minutes. So it will go ahead and boot up an emulator for us and it will do pretty much the same thing. It will go ahead, boot up an iOS emulator, then compile our application, install that application on the iOS emulator and launch that application for us. So just give it a couple of minutes. All right, so if you observe over here, it has successfully booted our emulator, iOS emulator and uh, installed our application on it and as well as launch that application for us. So here you can just go ahead and interact with it. The performance wise, it's absolutely, there is no difference between your native app or your uh, Quasar app. So here you can see on side by side, 
we have successfully created an Android application and as well as iOS application over here. I hope you liked this video tutorial. If yes, please do like, comment and share this video with your friends. And please do not forget to click subscribe button and bell icon in order to receive instant notifications from our channel.